Hello everybody, I'm going to do another video where I talk about gas masks I already talked about but just go into a bit more detail. And this time we're going to look at the PMG, the Soviet PMG, because it's always a favourite of people because it's basically the Metro, Metro Cop mask from Half-Life 2. If you had this mask without a filter on it then it's the Metro Cop mask, you know, if that was like that and then you had another sort of filter around that area. Um, and also if it had a kind of helmet on the back. So that's why this mask is, I think, so popular, just because it's the Metrocop mask from Half-Life 2, rather than it actually being, um, you know, people liking it for what it actually is. But it's an interesting mask. Now, I have spoke about this before in other videos, but what the Soviets actually did with this mask eventually was they updated it to the PMG-2, also known as the GP-5M, and probably incorrectly known as the GP6, but most people refer to the GP5M as the GP6 because there's not as GP6 as far as anyone's aware. So, what is this mask exactly? Well, the Soviets had mostly been using helmet style masks like the SHM 41 for quite a while, and the idea was that they wanted a lightweight infantryman's mask that I guess would fold up into a smaller satchel, um, and you'd put the filter directly on the mask, not having the filter. Uh, on a hose connected, you know, with a big canister. So, I mean, they could have easily done that with an SHM-41, um, but what they actually instead did was come up with this thing. Um, and this is both a good and a bad design, which I'll get into. I like it personally, but it has some flaws that a lot of people overlook when they talk about the mask, which I think, you know, um, kind of hurts the thing of the mask. Now, it has this weird filter intake there, if you look closely, you can see where it's sort of rotting a bit, or, you know, the, the rubber's at least a bit damaged. And that's because, rather than having standard kind of metal filter intake, it's like they moulded the rubber into the shape of a 40mm Gost thread. So, in theory it works, but it's a really weird decision. But the problem is with this mask, is that because the rubber's so flexible, once you put the weight of a filter on it, and the Soviet filters issued with this are fairly big, they're like GP5 filters that are bigger, um it puts too much weight there, so it starts pulling down one side of the mask. But you've got a speech diaphragm in here. Speech diaphragm is very simple, just take it out. It's actually, you know, you can take it out on this one. If I give it a bit of a tap, it'll come out. Anyway, you have this front cover cap that looks like that. Some versions of the PMG have different variants of these. I've got one with this many holes in, and I've got one that has more holes, which is smaller. They don't really affect the mask at all. And then let me just try and poke this out from this side without damaging it. Hopefully. Ooh. Um, right, if it'll come out. I've got my finger stuck. No, I don't think he really wants to come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what you have here, take both bits out, is what's well, essentially a washer, and there's your voice diaphragm. Voice diaphragms and lots of masks are just typically thin plastic because that amplifies your voice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to reassemble that into the mask carefully. So I'm just going to pause the camera, uh, get that done, then I'll go back to talking about the mask. But that is your voice diaphragm. If you want to see the mask about it, it's just got a sort of hole going in there. Interestingly, I don't know what the intake screw size is on that. Let me just check in case the uh, filters can be put into the voice diaphragm. That would just be funny if they could. I imagine it is a different um, intake size, but you never know. Yeah, that's bigger. It's more like 60mm, but I doubt a 60mm NATO is going to fit that. I just thought out of curiosity it would be quite funny if you could mount a filter to the front, but I guess you can't. Anyway, let me reassemble this. Okay, so here's the mask with the filter on. You might already be able to see the filters pulling down on one side of the mask, which isn't great. It's not so bad when you've got your head in it. Right, there's a couple of weird things this mask. Firstly, it kind of has this weird carry thing here where they've taken um, a load of the rubber out of the mask and they've just made it like this. The Chinese M69, which I think is based on this, also has holes where the ears are as well, which is a bit weird, but there you go. This has the standard Soviet ear thing where you've got kind of an outline for the ear to go where the rubber might be a bit thinner. It looks there like it's got a bit of, you know, thinness to it. Right, this one, and this is a very important fact, this is a size free one, uh, and it's made in 1984, this one. Um, what I'm going to say of this mask, if you're interested in getting one of these, always size up for one of these because these are really tight masks. Um, so if you think of like how tight a GP5 is in your size, if you bought this, it's essentially like buying a smaller mask. So always get these in the size above. 
Size 3 is kind of like Russian large, or at least medium large, and I've personally found that I, one of my others of these is a much smaller size, and that thing just like crushes my head. So, for comfort reasons, obviously you get that. Um, the mask also has the sort of SHMS and um, PBF style optical sort of lenses, where the idea is that they sit forward so you can use binoculars. Um, so that's a very good feature about this mask as well, it has the cooler eyepieces, but they don't actually sit as close to your eyes in this mask as they do with the SHMS, at least I've found they don't. So that does mean that, um, you know, it's not quite as effective. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's quite an interesting and cool mask. But anyway, if you want to see the inside, because people complain I don't show the inside of masks enough on here, and it's mostly because it's really hard to show the inside of a mask on the camera. But there you go, you can see where the sort of Tissot system is where the voice diaphragm is, external valves at the bottom. And this mask weirdly has another strap, or like a buckle, so you can do it up even tighter if you want to once you've got it on, but here we go. Alright, so that's the mask on. So, yeah, I can see fairly well with this. Binoculars would work fine with it because it has flat front bits. Uh, XL valve at the bottom, it always makes a weird clicking noise, this mask. I think that's the voice diaphragm pushing forward and backward. Uh, this isn't the most comfortable mask on the nose. Uh, again, that might be because I might need an even bigger size, but there always seems like this bridge bit that puts a bit of pressure on the nose itself. Especially when you inhale and it sort of pushes against your nose. Um, but yeah, overall, yeah, the mask works, it's a good design. Apart from the filter kind of weighing this one side down, but that's not the end of the world. But, due to cheapness reasons, the Soviets replace this with the PMG2, which is an inferior mask as far as mask design goes, uh, but it's a superior mask in terms of logistics and making masks. So it's not as good for the users, but it's better for the factory and the economy to make them. So let's get one up to show you the differences. Right, an interesting thing to note is this mask was made in 1981. So I think as much as they wanted to replace the PMGs with PMG2s, this is a PMG2, I think it was kind of like the PPSH and um, PPS41 situation in Russia or Soviet Union during World War II, if you know about that where they basically geared the machinery up to make an even cheaper uh, gun, in the case of the PPS-43. Uh, but because they already had so many factories that were built to make PPSH-41s, they kind of said, oh, it is expensive to convert them and it would stop us making guns. Let us make both in parallel. So they made both the PPSH and the PPS-43 uh, at the same time. And what ended up happening is after World War II, Russia had such a big surplus of SMGs that they basically sold them to absolutely everywhere. And that's the reason China and North Korea had so many PPSH-41s, because the Soviets had more submachine guns than they knew what to do with. And this, by that point as well, they'd already got the Kalashnikov coming into service that was meant to be an SMG, the SKS as their main rifle, and they figured they could just combine it and have the AK to do everything, and then they had all these guns and they didn't know what to do with them. But how does that relate to the mask? Well, I have a feeling it's going to be a similar thing with this. They had factories to build these, but they also had factories geared up to make those. And they said, oh, it is too expensive to convert the factories that make PMG1 to make it PMG2. Why don't we make both masks at the same time? And I think that's what's happened. So the PMG1, as I said, is technically superior if you're wearing it, other than a couple of minor complaints I have of it. But the PMG2 is still pretty decent. So what you have here is your typical SHM kind of Soviet helmet mask. Um, it's funny. SHM could stand for Soviet helmet mask. I know it doesn't, but um, you have, you know, that kind of intake outtake at the bottom. Your voice diaphragm there. Your Tissot tubes that go up to the eyes. All very simple. It's the same design they use on all of these masks. This one has ear holes in. Um, people said, doesn't that make your ears at risk? Only if you didn't have a hood on. Um, but bear in mind, if you're wearing an NBC suit, your ears are going to be covered by anything. All the NATO masks pretty much expose your ears so you can hear clearly. So that's not a flaw in the mask design, this is done intentionally. Right, so let's put it on. Okay, so yeah, your ears stick out there and you can hear. Your voice diaphragm works fine. The voice diaphragm is actually, I think, slightly bigger than the one on the PMG1, the size of the disc. Whether or not that makes it clearer to hear, I don't know. This is the same, same standardised one they used on the MM1. 
you know, on the SHMS, it's kind of like Soviet, I guess, a membrane uh, voice diaphragm, stick it on every mask you can fit it on. And yeah, the mask works fine, no problems there, but that one is definitely superior for seeing out of. This one you kind of can see a bit more to the sides, because these sit at kind of 45 degree angles, like that. The ones that sit st looking straight ahead are obviously better, because if these are shaped like that, like the MM1s, yeah, you could use binoculars and things as a mask, but they're like that, so you can't. Again, this would be fine for regular infantrymen, but you couldn't use a scope with it or anything like that. And um, I think the eyepieces like this are technically superior, because I think they block more kind of light getting into the mask when you want to see out. And it's easier to put binoculars and things flat against them with that kind of rub around the outside than it is a bigger, you know, sort of thing like that. So, this is, as I say, the mask that was designed to replace it. Whether it actually did properly or not, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's kind of cheaper to make, um, faster to make, because it's mostly using other gas mask bits sort of bodged together with a Frankenstein's monster approach. But the other one is technically superior if you're wearing it. So let's get this off. So, yeah, that's your video on the kind of PMG masks. Um, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, so yes, the PMG one is kind of a weird, ugly mask, but it kind of works well other than the filter weighing it down. Bear in mind, as I said, the Soviet filters I would come with that are heavier than that type. This is superior having a metal filter intake, um, but if they'd have done the eyepieces like the SHM, well, yeah, basically what I'm saying is if they'd have made this the SHMS, it would have been superior, but it's not. Um, but yeah, this is good enough for what it is. As I said, this was a combined master issue to civilians, issued as GP5M, or issued to the military as PMG2, um, because the Soviets had a weird thing where... The masks have an SHM name technically, for example the um, GP5 I think is SHM66U or something like that, or at least SHM66, but they do a thing where they sort of give the mask a name sort of as a factory name and then when it's issued it becomes a GP5 when it's put in a civilian kit or you know, so it's that sort of thing where the name will change depending on how it's issued. So that's a bit of random trivia for you. Again, I always call the GP5 the GP5, not the SHM66U or whatever it is, just simply because GP5 is a name everybody knows. It's the name I know. It's the name you knew it as if you were given it as a civilian. It says GP5 on the filter, so, you know, you can remember it easily that way. Um, but, yeah, there you go. That's my little talk about the PMG masks. Uh, again, I think PMG stood for something like Lightweight Infantryman's Mask. Um, yeah, they're good gas masks. Uh, so they have some flaws. The, I think that's why I keep saying the SHMS is the best of the Soviet masks, because, you know, the balance between good and bad factors normally massively outweighs in terms of good. And it's a shame the PBF had cheek filters, because as I said before, the PBF is technically the best of the Soviet masks on the inside, because it has an oral nasal cup. You know, PBF has lots of nice features, it just takes cheek filters, not conventional filters. If they'd have done it, you know, with blanking plugs, you could have two 40mm filters on the sides, or, you know, one on each side, then that would have been a really good mask, but sadly, um, that never materialised. So there you go, that's all about PMG masks.